Terrifier 3 is coming out soon, and I had never seen the Terrifier movies, and I watched them last week. Grayson is a huge Terrifier fan. I am indeed. And we're going to talk about it right now. It is crazy to consider that Terrifier is the only slasher franchise. What do you mean? There's not in this is the only slasher movie that's getting made. Like nobody's making slashers. Besides Scream and Scream Halloween. does not count. I mean, Scream's a slasher. Don't you dare ever deliberately disobey me ever again. <laughs> okay. This is the only slasher being made. Let's be honest. Halloween is dog shit. We're not even talking about Halloween. And Scream is a censorship machine. Okay? <laughs> It is totally sold out, and we are not seeing Scream 12. Okay? Fair enough. Okay, continue on with your, your thought. Let's let's see what else you got. Art is the only active slasher guy. Okay. Because Halloween's over. Okay. Yeah. I ain't counting Scream. Okay, okay. you're not counting Ghostface. That's, I ain't counting Ghostface. That's an that's a interesting take, but let's go. Let's just start over. No, this is this is good conversation. <laughs> I ain't counting that. Jason's dead. Freddy's gone. Unfortunately, yes. Uh, I mean, there's others, but they're like they're not full blown franchises that are popping off. I think the last really big new one was Victor Crawley, and that was with the Hatchet franchise. I don't even know what that is. Exactly. I, so like, I, it's, yeah. I, I do agree with you. Slashers have been more of a a dormant genre and now you have art showing up to think that art is in call of duty alongside those characters should tell you how many good slashers we've had that aren't legacy franchises it is kind of wild because slasher is my favorite genre i love them i've watched them since i was young and it is something that i've been craving to come back and i was excited when 2018 halloween got announced so i'm like here we go. Yeah, and of, back. and of course that movie was awesome. It did. It made a lot of money, and it showed more interest. You know, we got another Texas Chainsaw because of that. And yep. I do believe Terrifier 1 came out before that did, but it wasn't talked about as yes. much. Yes, uh, because it's small on the indie scene. Damien Leone, uh, obviously super talented. I think it's safe to call him visionary, right? I, uh, I would definitely say Damien Leone is the most creative out right now because he... Writes, directs, edits, special effects. Because it's cheaper. Right? And yeah, he, he does everything. Yeah. I think that his creativity uh, surges through the lack of uh, censorship or rating, right? Mm -hmm. I think I think that I think that you would have gotten a lot more terrifier like movies uh, if people weren't so uh greedy it's kind of strange so terrifier is making money because it's basically unrated super indie damien obviously does the all the work himself and if you don't know like this came out made a couple of million dollars uh the first one how much did the first terrifier make i have no okay. idea the first terrifier made about half a million which on, is really good on thirty five thousand yes. dollars right mm -hmm. uh the second terrifier uh bring that up grayson if you could yeah uh and oh i got it right here uh the second tire fire made 15.7 million which is incredible on a 250 million dollar budget i don't know how to tell you this but I feel like this is where filmmaking will probably end up going more and more often because I promise you whoever invested the $250,000 budget is pretty damn happy yeah. with a $16 million return. Terrifier 2 did more than the recent See No Evil. Did it really? Yes. It like see no e the see no evil remake opened. I mean, it might have eclipsed it more, but uh or speak no evil. The speak no evil film uh has made Oh, it's now made 58. It opened to 11 million. Okay. On a 15 million dollar budget, mm -hmm. right? 
Uh, excuse me. But com apples to oranges, like, the, the way that that scales is insane. Like, Terrifier 2 made 8 million times its budget and uh, Speak No Evil quadrupled it. <laughs> right? You know, it, yeah. it just... The return is ridiculous. And so, I think especially to horror fans, it's the little slasher movie that could, right? Yeah. I, I look at Terrifier as, man, I'm getting to relive the 80s. Yeah. Only like, way worse. It is, Oh, by <laughs> far. It's, it's, it's way worse with what happens in these films. Yeah. But it is such a breath of fresh air. I completely understand that the Terrifier movies are not for everyone. Yes. I get that. They are a lot to take in. But for somebody who has grown up with the slasher genre and has wanted somebody to kind of have the nuts to do something again with it, I love it. Yes, like, and to reject studio acquisition. Yeah, saying, right? no, this is my vision. This is what I want, and this is what I'm going to I'll do. I'll figure out how to make it, and mm -hmm. it's going to make a shitload of money. Yes. Right? Uh, so with that, so I go into Terrifier one and two. Uh, I have I've only seen a couple of scenes from Terrifier two because everybody said it was just so horribly violent. Yeah, and, and it's I, mean. Yeah, and I needed to watch it, and uh, it is very mean, but it's also very funny. Uh, it <laughs> is quite hilarious. So I go into Terrifier one, and you know, I'll be honest, I thought it was not good. Uh, I, I thought it was, I think that the kills were, obviously there is a kill where a woman is suspended vertically and mm -hmm. upside down. She is hacksawed through her legs and midsection. Mm -hmm. It is one of the most horrible things you yep. could ever watch. Uh, yep. <laughs> I mean, you could ever watch like ever. Yeah. Uh, nothing in Terrifier 2 eclipses that, uh, to me. And... She gets cut, split in half alive, and it's all done with such a mean spirit because not only is Art the Clown having a good time, he's just wordless and relentless, Yeah, and he doesn't ever stop. He makes a joke of it. Yeah, he makes a joke of it, and it's, you know, when you're watching Halloween and Michael pins the guy to the wall and he has an admiration for mm. himself and what he does, Art doesn't have that. He's like, I cut it. I cut her open. That was funny and a great time. Now I'm going to move on and do the next thing. Uh, there's, there's kind of an, I think in, we'll get to that in Terrifier 2. I think it's a little different in Terrifier 2 because I think he does kind of be like, hey, look what I did. This is kind of cool. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think he sees it as art though. In the, in the cruelty, I think he, Art the Clown. I think he's just having so much fun, you know? Okay. And whenever I think he's just like straight lining, he's like a train, right? Mike, Michael, Michael will make the pit stop to be like, that was pretty good. Let me let me cut this guy's head off and make a jack o' lantern with it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which Art does as well. I will say this is true, Art man. did it first. Like yeah. Art he does it to the pizzeria guy. He puts his head as like a little jack o' lantern up on the countertop. Yeah, but, but he's the the cruelty is in the spirit of it, and mm -hmm. he's just trying to have a good time, and this is how he does it. And especially in the the scene where he pulls the gun, uh, the, there's there's a girl, this, yeah. the our lead character in Terrifier One. I do not remember her Tara. name. Tara. Tara is approaching arts and she has overwhelmed him and mm -hmm. is finally gonna put him down yeah and he just pulls peace it's my favorite scene of that movie yeah i think so too he just pulls peace and shoots her straight up when i saw terrifier one for the first time which i will admit the very first time i watched terrifier one i did not like it yeah i had to re-watch it again to be like I get it now because i think but, i think if i would have watched it in 2016 i would have i would have been like Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. A really mean jerk. Yeah, and that's I didn't see the the comedic side of it until I really thought about it afterwards about the gun scene. Yeah. And in my head I was like I think Art might be one of the smartest killers because Art gives her the opportunity to kill him. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't do it. She lets him get back up and in doing so he goes, "Cool, check this out." Bow and just shoots her. 
Mm -hmm. And after I thought about it, I was like, that's that's really funny. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's really funny that he's basically saying, oh, man, you got me. Oh, you're not going to finish it off? <laughs> okay, you idiot. <laughs> Let me finish it then. Yeah. So yeah. gets rid of the star of the movie at that point. Yep. Uh, but yeah, I think, I think it's obviously a lot of budget constrictions yeah. that keeps it, that keeps it not that good to me. Uh, it's in a garage for the whole time. Yeah. I, there's cops wandering in and out of it and the, the exterminators are in there too. Yeah. And, you know, I, I appreciate it because of how much they get out of how little they had. Uh -huh. So the more and more I watch it, it makes me think of. Man, this was a lot better than most horror movies that were coming out around that time with gotcha. a bigger budget that they had. Yeah. So for me, looking at Terrifier One, I just give it the whole, hey, good job. Yeah. I way appreciate to, you way, for that. Way to get started and yeah. take action, right? Exactly. Uh and so I moved on to Terrifier Two, mm -hmm. much more excited. Yeah. Uh and I was very happy to see that it centered on a family. It was very, it, it was a lot like uh, Friday the 13th, final chapter. Uh, yeah. In yeah. that you have an assertive younger brother who is into the space. Yep. Right. You have uh, obviously our Valkyrie warrior mm -hmm. queen, Sienna. Oh my God, Sienna is amazing. She is great. Uh, and you know she's got that thread of creating her cosplay mm -hmm. to kind of honor her dad and all that and art the clown is just kind of running running wild out here in the club uh <laughs> we have we we don't have any moments to me that transcend i think because the cutting scene is so sexual assaulty in nature and I, I genuinely think that when I was watching Terrifier One, that hacksaw scene, that might have been one of the most anti-woman scenes I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Like, I felt the same way as when I had watched like The Accused with Jodie Foster. Like, I was like, this is this is super uncomfortable and okay. horribly violent to watch. Um. And I don't think he's gonna ever. I don't. I don't think they'll ever do anything to to top that one. I for me, I am opposite. I think Terrifier 2's bedroom death uh -huh. is some of the worst stuff I've ever seen. Yeah, and we will be doing a Patreon exclusive uh, <laughs> reaction. Yeah. to the Terrifier two uh, bedroom scene. Yeah, we, I don't. I don't think that will be monetized at all. Oh on YouTube. No. no! So you can go to patreoncom slash uh with which is our master Patreon to support mm -hmm. Carnage Candy, uh, what we're doing here on the channel, and watch us react to the Terrifier two bedroom scene. Warning: If you don't like violence, you should absolutely not go watch. That there's, video. there's, there's a lot. Yeah, a lot. But when I first watched Terrifier Two, I had heard a lot from previews uh -huh. already. Not about that scene, but lots of buzz about there how was, violent it was. There was buzz in this is probably some of the most horrific things I've ever seen in a movie. So when I'm watching Terrifier Two, I'm waiting. And I'm just thinking to myself, okay, you know, there's been a, there's been a couple of kills in this already. We're 45 pretty, minutes, an hour yeah, and a half into the movie. When when is this going to happen? Yeah, and it happens to the character I never expected it to happen to. Mm -hmm. And whenever it does happen, after it was done, because I'm watching it with Tiff, like Tiff and I are watching it together. And after it was over, I just kind of looked over at her and I went, "That was a lot." <laughs> That that was a lot. It just keeps going. It's like a five minute death. I yeah, think. she is scalped and filleted and S peeled, scalpeled over the eye. Yep. Like that's the first thing that happens yep. to her. Broken she, arms, ripped she, off. Like. She is. Uh, her fingers are split down the middle. Yep. Uh, her face is ripped off. Her back wounds are salted. Yep, and bleach is poured on her. Salt. Yeah, yeah. He sprinkles salt yeah. all over. Yeah, just a giant can, and it just keeps going and going. Yeah. And uh, it's horrible. It is. It is one of those moments after it was over with, it was, well, 
nothing's going to be worse than this for the whole movie. Yeah. It is definitely the center set piece of the yeah. film. Uh, you know, I I got to say they got to be proud of that, though. Oh, yeah, I they would got, be. They got to be so I proud would of be that. for sure, because there will never be a moment from here on out that that will not be in, like, the top three worst moments in a horror movie ever. Yeah, as, like, far, as, as far as the grimness yes. and the torture. And yes. the actress plays it perfectly oh, she kills it like, she I, does I was amazing. like wow we're just and the violence is so crazy because you want to see it because it's so well crafted yeah because on the realism scale it's like that perfect 8.5 yeah. of like that is so disgusting but it's like like saw Saw is for me is like that that nine point five. Yeah, I don't want to watch this for sure. Right, except for when they CG stuff. Yeah, right for sure. But this one is that perfect like I can handle this uh -huh. barely <laughs> because the skin is just plastic enough. Yes, to be fake. And I think that's what he's going for. exactly. Like whenever they frame up, he grabs her by two of the fingers and then splits her entire yeah. arm open. It is framed perfectly to where I'm like, that is definitely a fake arm. Yeah. But then it looks very real when he does. Yep. And then the actress screams perfectly, and it's terrifying. Yeah. Uh, terrifying, too. So, I don't know. I, I, I don't understand how, like, there's got to be... I, I don't know how he would craft something like that other than just, like, doing his best... Do you think that, like, let's say the next movie, he, which he will. I don't know. Uh, let's see how much budget he got for Terrifier 3. Uh, so he has, a, he has four times the budget uh, for Terrifier 3. Awesome. Do you think that the violence in Terrifier can get to be to a place where it's unwatchable? After seeing the hacksaw and after seeing the bedroom scene, do you I, think Terrifier will ever be able to cross a I, line for us? I don't know. For it, I don't know if it will for me because I've I've already I've already digested so much that it takes a lot for yeah. me to be like I can't watch this. Yeah. Um, for the general audience, I think so. Yeah. I, I mean, obviously, the general audience isn't going to go see this at all. Uh, they might. Some of them might. Just for okay. It'll be a mistake. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> It'll be for sure it will be. Yeah. I think it will be one of those, I dare you to go see Terrifier 3 in theaters. Exactly, yeah. And, and it's like, uh, I mean, it's like when you were kids. It's like, oh, man, you're not allowed to watch that one for yeah, real. Yeah, for sure. And that's, I've already seen things about Terrifier 3, not like actual scenes, but I've already seen articles about uh -huh. premieres where people are walking out in the first nine minutes okay. of the movie. So I think he's coming in a little hot in this it movie. It also is during festival scenes. This is yes. why at Cannes and stuff, you see people give 40-minute ovations exactly. for movies that are okay. Yeah, for sure. It's like, remember, the people that are watching this, especially for early and fat and especially like going to indie shows it's like i've walked out of indie movies I'm yeah like this is this is yeah hard. it's just not for certain people exactly and I, I get that so the walkouts might be a higher yeah alley. i'm i'm excited for what he's going to do with this one um but i to answer your question I think he eventually will get to the point to where the general audience will not be able to handle it but i think i probably will always be able yeah. to yeah yeah I think that uh, in terms of, I don't know, just that hacksaw scene was so brutal. Uh, I think it, it would have to be worse than that because that that was my limit. I mm. was I, when that happened, I was like, I will watch this, mm. but I totally reject it. <laughs> like as an idea, yeah. I was like, that one probably. I mean, that is. I think that is. I think that is definitely on the limit of ooh, that's a little too far. Yeah. So that. I, in I I think that's why I like two a lot more. Like I appreciate one, but I I love Terrifier two. Yeah, it's different whenever because it's a different tone. It's a different tone. Yeah, yeah. and it's, I, I mean, it's different because in Terrifier one, like he he like strips her. Yeah, for sure. And then does it, so mm -hmm. it's like even more brutal. This one, the bedroom scene plays out more like a home invasion. 
that's yeah. like yeah. super over the top. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about Sienna and mm -hmm. her uh, final gal kind of take right there. Mm -hmm. Her costume design was spectacular. She's blood covered and she looks like this cool yeah. Valkyrie warrior. And, um, you know, her friend, uh, of course, follow the rules. Like she does drugs, has some sex, then gets acided and tortured in the bathroom. Uh, I had I had a really good time watching her death. Uh, I was I, I thought that was more a little more fun to watch i wish that she would have had a worse death personally oh yeah because she is such a horrible person she is a bad friend for she sure is man. a horrible friend yeah and all the stuff that she's doing and the stuff she's saying to her and the way she's acting i'm like god i can't wait for you to just go yeah because you're just so awful to uh sienna it's funny you say that because it's like it's like i wish something worse would have happened to her Girl gets yeah, <laughs> but that's the thing in Terrifier. It's like yeah, what am I saying? She like, gets acid in the face and beat with a table leg with nails and everything, and yeah, then her it's chest like, cavity opened. It's like I wish something worse would have happened to her. When her death in any other horror movie would have by far been the most talked mm -hmm. about part. Yeah, uh, but yeah, that I thought that was fun. Um, and the movie. I'm watching it and I'm like, this is so long, it man. Is. And it is. I'm like, this is a hard to watch movie that's two hours and I think the runtime is like an two, hour and a half of the first. Uh, the the runtime is a hundred it's two hours and twenty minutes um for Terrifier 2. And you finish the movie and you're like, that was so long. And then I'm like, I'm genuinely like, I don't know what you would have cut though. I can't, I, what scenes do you remove to I make it more efficient? I would have definitely lowered a lot of the dance, like the club scenes. Okay. There's a lot in the club that I'm like, oh, we don't need this. It just keeps yeah. popping up back and forth. Maybe there's five minutes there. Yeah. You cut five minutes there. You could probably cut five minutes at the beginning with a dead animal. Like you don't have to like stay on the dead animal for so long. Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of stuff that probably could have just been talked about in the scene. I, I do say, I, I will say like the clown cafe is long. I would never take anything from that scene. Yeah. yeah. I love every bit of the clown cafe. So I don't care that that's like a 10 minute scene. Mm -hmm. But there, there are moments where I'm like, ah, oh, what would I cut? What would I not cut? I think, I think I would trim a little bit for better. I think there's poor comedic timing in the edit a little bit, whereas it lingers on art a little bit too long. Like he'll give a wave and a smile mm -hmm. and then like he'll just keep doing it for like 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. I think I think they're going for like he's awkward. Yeah, he's awkward. Right. Mm -hmm. I think it would just be plain funny to like cut it when he at the at the smirk yeah. and stuff like that even but though I don't he know already if, is hilarious yeah in this movie. but i don't know if it makes him more frightening if he's yeah. awkward as well because i think my favorite part about art is that i don't know if you'll understand what i'm saying or if the audience will get it but it feels to me on on purpose mm -hmm. Like, the actor doesn't want to be playing the part. Like, the actor seems to have, like, there's, like, I, I don't know how to describe it. I don't know if it's because the actor is good enough or not good enough. Or if he's, like, a if he's bad at the role. But he's perfect, so I don't know how to just say it. It's like... I don't know. I don't know. I might have to just cut that out. I don't know how to describe no, it. No, I mean it's it's a train of thought that you have right there, and I think it is kind of hard for you to hit where it, you're hitting. It's it's like the actor. It's like the actor is uncomfortable in his own skin. It, it's okay. It, have you ever seen um, have you ever seen a kid at a school dance mm -hmm. that doesn't want to be there uh -huh. and is scared to go ask mm -hmm. the girl like. It's like this uncomfortability and, oh, I'm so stupid. It's like how Joaquin Phoenix acts after he shoots Robert De Niro. Gotcha. You know how he shoots him and he's like, okay, I don't know what to do here. Uh -huh. But like in his little like, mm -hmm. <laughs> in his little things, it's like this weird, 
I don't know. We might just have to. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It's I, just very uncomfortable to watch. Yeah, I think what I love about art and what I really appreciate with David Howard Thornton, who plays art, is... Only in the second one? He plays in both. Okay. He's, he's not the original art. From the original indie film, he wasn't. Yeah, there was an indie film, and there was All Hallows' Eve. There Got, was a different that's right, actor okay. at that point. But what I appreciate about his portrayal of art is that he's, he does so well at being so funny, and he does so well at being so creepy and scary at the same time yeah and that is such a hard thing to do and a balance because with freddie for instance like freddie has a good balance of that for a while but then it eventually just becomes like oh you're just he washes comedian. over exactly and, yeah whereas with art and there's only been you know there's only been two terrifier movies but art has been around for a little bit now he's very consistent so far yeah he has had that same comedy and same creepiness so far and i appreciate that like it's it's a really cool villain that you want to see die but you're always like hey it's cool that he's on screen right now <laughs> yeah 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 i mean i think that it, when we're talking about what to cut from terrifier 2 i think it's just really keep the non or keep the victim stories as lean as you can yeah while being effective but at the same time again like like i said I, it's it, that's a hard cut because you really do get a nice payoff with her talking about her dad and yep. being the warrior yep. and and um and her using the sword yeah uh and all that you get a really good character payoff and it's really incredible that that can happen in a film that could be so brainless if it wanted to be. Mm -hmm. But just to have to have to say that Terrifier Two has heart, and it's the same movie where we watch her girl get tortured for yeah. four minutes uh, in the most decrepit, terrible way, mm -hmm. is like really uh, a testimony to, yeah. to how good it is. It is. So, and also I think that that runtime is, it's almost like a celebration yeah. that he can't, that it's my movie. Yeah. I'm going to do it. Yeah. It's like, I want to make it two hours and 20 minutes. It's, a, a studio would have said, go fuck yourself. It's an yeah, hour it's and a half. It's an hour and a half. Yeah. yeah. You're going to keep it that way. Uh, so I do think that that's like, I think the runtime reflects the fact that Damien has control over his own movie yeah, completely. Right. For sure. I, I say it a lot. Like Terrifier 2 is a little too long. I've watched the movie like five times at this point. I will watch Terrifier 2 very often. And it's so funny that I'm like, oh, it's too long. But I sit through the whole thing every time. Yeah. I never fast forward. And I, I'm five, I'm five moments in. And I think the reason why we say that is there's not many slashers out there that go that long. Yeah. Like, so. I would give Terrifier 2 probably a five out of five as far as horror movies go. It's like. I think it's obviously unrestrained mm -hmm. and it's like the that like I said it's got it's got a real character arcs in mm -hmm. it and it's got surprises and it's well crafted the acting is surprisingly well yep for it too like and my biggest issue with I don't like the way they look, Terrifier looks, because it looks so much like an indie film. Yeah, I get that. At the same time, I think that if it was if it looked like Saw, or it looked like if it was filmed, you know, w with the same kind of camera in stock mm. as the substance, mm. I think it would be too much. I think it would make the special effects or effects look bad, personally. Yeah, I, well, I, I think the way that they film it makes it look better. Really, I think that it makes the special effects look cheaper because it makes the entire movie look cheaper, and then that makes it okay. I think if they if it looked more realistic with a better camera, it would be worse, and I wouldn't be able to watch it. I think that's the difference between this and Saw, <laughs> is that Saw is filmed, obviously, with m much better equipment, right? Yeah. Uh, and it's too, it's, too re it's too realistic. Yeah. Whereas this looks like, I'm not I'm not trying to say that it looks like, you know, uh, Spielberg doing somebody with getting their head blown off mm -hmm. is a lot different than 
a 17 year old with a camera getting yeah, their head blown off for sure and i think if like a spielberg head explosion is a 10 and as far as like i would i want to see it happen over yeah. and over again and you know this one's a little softer i think that the quality of the filmmaking technically like makes it palatable yeah but yeah it's it's a five out of five for me as well yeah like it's 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 everything that I've been waiting for, honestly. I've been waiting for somebody to kind of inject the slasher genre with something different, and here we are. And it's it's making me happy to see how many fans are like coming out, and new fans are happening because of Terrifier Two, and it's got me super excited for the third one. So, what do you think about Legacy in that studios? You know, they're going to make their Scream 10. Uh They're going to make Jason reboot. Yep. They're going to make, and here's Damien. Just, I got a new one. I Mm -hmm. made him. Mm -hmm. He's going to the top. He's in Call of Duty. You know, what do you, what do you think in terms of like studios probably will respond to this by doing legacy characters? Do you think there's any future for studios to have the new go fa- ghost face or do you think we're going to be reserved to the indie scene for slashers forever i think the only slasher that could actually do something that could compete with terrifier would be jason Voorhees. yeah is, because those are based on exactly the they're violence. based on the kills yeah so i think that's the only thing that a company could do right now that could do anything with this. Yeah. I hope what I hope happens from what is happening with the terrifiers is that we see more directors come up and show off what they can do with horror movies as well. I want to see these new and creative ideas. I want to see like a rise of the indie movies and I want it to kind of be like a takeover. Like it was in the eighties yeah. where everybody was literally putting a film out there and making it on as you know big of a budget as they could. We kind of had a boom like that. New. We kind of had a boom like that with the paranormal movies. Right? Yeah, we did. Yeah. For sure. For sure. And I think, uh, that it's, would be an interesting video to make is to look at all the horror booms and then see, Number one, what was happening in the world, and then what they cost. Mm-hmm. That would be really interesting. Yeah. So, but yeah, uh, Terrifier three is uh, basically out, and Sam. Yep. And I are gonna go see Terrifier three. Sam has not seen any Terrifiers, but I'm gonna drag him along. Grayson will be on vacation. I will be. You'll probably, I'll probably have like a five minute video that I'll talk to Sean about about Terrifier three when I get back because I yeah. will be seeing it after I get done with vacation. Yeah. So you'll get my opinion on it as but well. But the Terrifier three review will have Sam and I. Uh, <laughs> you will have a completely agnostic reviewer uh, talking about Terrifier three with me. So you guys have an awesome day and go check out this video on auditing. A nice little spoiler mm-hmm. review for you.